So I've been using my 2018 iPad Pro for a little over two weeks now. I've done everything from photo editing, video editing, gaming, you name it, I've pretty much done it. And I'm going to be answering the question, should you go out and buy the 2018 iPad Pro now or should you wait until the next generation 2020 iPad Pro? Don't let the year fool you. 2018, I understand it was two years ago, but this looks like something that Apple would release today. And speaking of that, the 2020 iPad Pro is going to look exactly the same as the 2018 iPad. That's how good it is. And especially you have that ProMotion display, which is found on smartphones today, like the Samsung S20. I try to make it, you know, this video smooth, as you guys can see my hands, but this video is not gonna do any justice because this is 120, this is only 60 frames per second. And also with the display, I appreciate how the bezels are thin, but they thin enough, just the perfect length so you can hold in your hands because this is not a smartphone. You don't want it edge to edge completely. You wanna have some bezels so you can be able to hold the iPad. Yeah, I understand the iPad's bend, but just using this two weeks later, I haven't had any issues with bending, of course. Um, I didn't rock out with no case. Like MKBHD said, you know, Apple did design this from the ground up and put in a plastic case or a rubbery case on there. It just feels wrong, but you do want to protect your investment. I understand that, but you want that naked feel of the iPad Pro. You want to feel that in your hands. And I appreciate the boxy design because it holds the Apple Pencil in place very, very well. And I wish Apple would adapt this to the iPhone, having type C. Um, this design is easier to hold, I feel like. Now this iPad is the 256 with cellular capabilities. If you're gonna buy an iPad Pro, try not to get the base storage, which is 64 gigabytes. You're gonna regret it towards the end. My previous generation iPad Pro has 32 gigabytes of storage. Of course, I have the Apple Pencil and keyboard. So just actually video editing and photo editing and you know doing Pro stuff is like, almost impossible because of the storage um, so get yourself at least 256 gigabytes of storage and in terms of cellular capabilities it's better to have that that cellular service just in case if you need it and yes you can use mobile hotspot on your iPhone but then now that's gonna drain your iPhone's battery life that's gonna raise up your data plan I just like to have everything independent. I'll go a little bit more in depth with iPad with cellular capabilities on a future video, just in case if you guys are on the fence of that. Um, I just really want to take this iPad with me like on a big trip, such as like, you know, road trip, plane trip, whatever the case may be. Then I'll activate it and put it to the real test. And I did activate it to do mobile gaming to hotspot it to my PS4 and it works pretty well. Now I want to talk to you guys about my experience with video editing on the iPad Pro 2018. Now, my editing app of choice is LumaFusion. That is the best video editing app on the iPad, hands down. I was editing a video for church. You know, it's Black History Month, and I wanted to participate on, you know, showcasing the rights of voting. I downloaded some videos on YouTube. Now, I know that's kind of against the YouTube terms and conditions, maybe, but I did it just for church. You know, it's for church. And thanks to the iPad OS, I was able to download those YouTube videos. So I just went to this site where you can download YouTube videos and Safari was able to download it and put it into my files and I was able to import it to LumaFusion. That is just fantastic and I definitely do appreciate Apple for editing Safari downloads. Now that video was just very basic editing, cutting this part, you know, um, adding transitions, adding text. Now when I was finished editing that video, I export it to a storage device. This is the beauty thing about having this iPad. Type C capabilities is definitely a day and night difference. If you're making a decision between the iPad Air and the Pro, the Pro is gonna allow you to connect external hard drives such as an SSD like my Samsung T5 and just put it directly on the T5 itself. So no adapters, nothing like that. Although I do recommend picking up an adapter so you can connect to more devices. I picked this one up here on Amazon so I could connect um, two thumb drives, USB-A, I have a Type-C, I have a HDMI, a SD card reader, and even an Ethernet. But I was able to completely export that video that I edited on LumaFusion onto an SSD or a thumb drive. I think it was a thumb drive. That just amazes me on how powerful this device is. And it was scrolling through the timeline very, very smoothly. You can edit something on LumaFusion and then export it as an XML file, a Final Cut Pro file, and pick it up where you left off on your Mac. That's genius. I know a lot of people say, oh, two years, that was two years ago. Technology world, that's a long time, but 
the 2018 iPad is still a champ. Now moving right along to artwork. I am a graphic designer. I graduated with a degree in commercial art and digital technology. So I downloaded Procreate Infinity Photo. You can sketch something on Procreate and then you can kind of refine that image or make it look a little better on Infinity Photo. It's just definitely a killer combo. I highly recommend those two applications. Once you start messing around with Procreate, you'll be amazed on how much work that you can get done and stuff will look fire. You know, if you just free your mind and just start drawing and start sketching and start doing things, you'll be amazed on how much work that you can push out with just the iPad Pro with Apple Pencil. This work that I just never thought I could do. I mean, it really does bring the best out of me as a designer, as a graphic designer. Humrika. Humrika. It's just so much fun actually sketching on the iPad Pro and especially having that ProMotion display. It makes drawing feel so much more natural than my previous generation iPad Pro. I had the first gen 9.7 inch iPad Pro and you know, it was cool, but it, this is just so much more better. And combine that with the low latency on the Apple Pencil and the update, even lowering down the latency even more, this is just a no brainer for graphic designers. I just brought this Apple Pencil last week and I picked up the iPad Pro, of course, two weeks ago. Now, one thing I absolutely need for my iPad Pro is Paperlike. Paperlike is a screen protector that makes your iPad feel like a sheet of paper, so it's gonna feel even more natural than ever before. I had it on my previous generation iPad Pro, but after a while, it's not a glass screen protector, so it'll peel up a little bit, and especially I didn't have a case to protect that screen protector but I need one for this iPad nonetheless. So I'll pick one up later in the future. Make sure you guys subscribe if you're new around here if you guys wanna see the best iPad Pro accessories to bring the best out of your iPad Pro. Now I appreciate the Apple Pencil double tap functionality where you can switch tools around such as the eraser or the pen tool. It's not really natural, but it's something to get used to. But one thing that is better and I'm totally used to it already is the way how you charge the Apple Pencil second generation. Just attach it right next to the iPad Pro and it's automatically going to start charging wirelessly. You cannot buy an iPad Pro without the Apple Pencil. If you want the complete iPad Pro experience, you have to get the Apple Pencil. It's just something about it refines the experience even more. I did wrote a script for this video. I wrote it entirely on my iPad Pro. Now moving right along to photo editing, I mostly use Lightroom to edit my photos and I drop it into Affinity Photo if I wanna do any more refinements. This is the full Lightroom experience, but just on your iPad. Again, to put the cherry on top, it is 100% free. Now, you will need to have an Adobe Creative Cloud account. Now, I recently went to my cousin's birthday party and you know we took a lot of pictures. I took some pictures on my iPhone and I decided to edit on my iPad Pro. It's just like, it's such a similar experience like on my Mac, but I feel like this is way better because I have that Apple Pencil. And you know, it just makes sharing things a little bit more easier than having it on my Mac and then airdropping it to my iPad or iPhone. It's just everything is all in one on my iPad right here. Any presets you download on the web, you can easily import it onto your iPad. It's automatically gonna sync thanks to uh, Creative Cloud. Now let's move on to gaming. My gaming experience on the 2018 iPad Pro was just completely mind blowing. My first game that I downloaded was Fortnite to test out the 120 frames per second. And Pan oh man, that is just the truth. I never seen something so smooth like that on a tablet like this. Now, like I said, this video is not gonna do any justice because this is 60 frames per second. If you go to your local Apple store and download Fortnite on one of those iPads or whatever, if they have it, you guys gotta test that out because it is definitely worth the hype. And if you pair that with a controller, you have that true gaming experience right there on your iPad Pro. So you could pair up an Xbox One controller, a PS4 controller, and you're just gonna have that Fortnite experience. And honestly, you're gonna have a, an advantage because really, that 120 frames per second versus someone who has a 60 hertz display. And then they make things even better with the gaming experience. If you have an adapter with an HDMI, you can hook this up to your TV or monitor and you can have the complete gaming experience. So this iPad is a monster and developers are still optimizing their games for to support the 120 frames per second on the iPad Pro. So it's only gonna get better from here on out. So even if you buy an iPad Pro today, it's still gonna get better despite being 2018. So you have nothing to worry about guys. Now that wasn't the only game I downloaded. I downloaded Call of Duty Mobile and it is basically the same exact Call of Duty experience but just on your iPad. Now the graphics, they look good but the PS4 looks better of course but it still looks good. It's console quality graphics and you can still play with a PS4 controller. But you do not have the smooth 120 frames per second. Hopefully Activision will 
update Call of Duty Mobile to support 120 frames per second. It still looks smooth, it's still no lags, it's still no stutter, and it's like the full Call of Duty experience like I mentioned. I have a cellular capable iPad so I can online game on the go. Now I'm not subscribed to Apple Arcade just yet, but if you guys wanna see a video on that, just let me know in the comments. I'll make that happen for you guys. All right, so let's move on to media consumption. I watch a lot of YouTube on my iPad Pro, but overall, my experience with the iPad Pro has been excellent. I cannot complain. My user experience has been just phenomenal. It's fun to use, but it's professional. You can get things done, actually. Video editing, photo editing, gaming. Now, I don't think this can replace my MacBook Pro anytime soon, just because of Final Cut Pro. I can run 100 tabs on Chrome. I don't know my computer's gonna slow down, but the multitasking on the iPad Pro, I wish it was improved a little bit. I saw some concepts on Twitter where they can slide over and then get the home screen on the side. I like that. So Apple really do need to refine the multitasking experience on iPad OS. Now, yes, you can swipe up a little bit to reveal a dock and open up those apps there. But let's say your app isn't listed on that dock, isn't there. You have to swipe all the way up, open up that app, and then you got to do it. It's just so tedious to do, I feel like. But I would say having the iPad is good. It's a good combination between the Mac and the iPad. It just goes together so well. And I appreciate Apple for making the iPad OS update. You know, it has mouse support, which I haven't tested out yet. I am waiting for the bridge. Uh, <laughs> I am waiting for the bridge keyboard plus to release because that has a keyboard and a trackpad combined. I need to get my hands on that to completely refine my iPad experience. And of course, the A12X chip performs extremely well even to this day. To this day! To this day! The 2018 iPad is a pop 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 pops approval. Now, should you go out and buy the 2018 iPad Pro or should you wait until the 2020 iPad Pro? I would say go out and buy the 2018 iPad Pro. Waiting for the 2020 iPad Pro is not going to be a significant upgrade compared to the 2018 one other than just the cameras, a faster processor, a stronger body. It's not going to really be a significant jump compared to the 2018 iPad. If you can snag a 256 gigabyte iPad Pro for under the $799 price tag that Apple is selling it, I would say go for it. Now, yes, I'm still gonna be picking up the 2020 iPad just to compare it to the 2018 iPad, so make sure you guys subscribe if you're new around here with notifications on so you guys don't miss that video. And other than that, this video is a wrap. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did, I appreciate it with a thumbs up and let me know down in the comments down below what you guys think about the 2018 iPad Pro. Until next time, guys, peace.